ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له اشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلوات الله والسلام عليه اما بعد يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله واحسن الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار ثم اما بعد الحمد لله على نعمه الاسلام والسنه All praise and thanks belong to Allah for guiding us to Islam and for guiding us to the Sunnah. Ya marhaban bikum. After thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and sending the salah and salam upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we want to thank the organizers of this morning's or this afternoon's lecture and reminder may allah ta'ala reward them with good may allah ta'ala bless them tremendously then we would like to request from our noble sisters that they become active participants in this morning's class and that is by having a pen and a paper at their disposal so they may take notes bismillahi ta'ala and write down those key points that they deem to be of significance bismillahi ta'ala the topic of this morning's discussion or this afternoon's discussion then verily there are critical points of advice so that you can live your best life and this is an advice specifically to my sisters any benefit that is a general benefit that others may benefit from it then bithnilahi ta'ala then it is for them as well but specifically and speaking to the sisters undoubtedly no one will be able to be successful except that they have to be upon the deen of al-islam allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he informs us in his noble book inna deen indallah al-islam that verily the only religion that is accepted by Allah that it is Islam so we have to be muslim you will not be able to live your best life if you are not a muslim so you have to be a muslim and alhamdulillah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he has guided us to Islam and he has guided us to the sunnah alhamdulillah ala ni'mat al-islam wa sunnah or praise and thanks belong to Allah for guiding us to Islam and for guiding us to the sunnah because by being muslim Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he saved us from the false religions and by being upon the sunnah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he saved us from the false ideologies creeds and methodologies so alhamdulillah this is a tremendous ni'mah bila shak wa bila raib my dear sisters after mentioning what was already mentioned then i advise you as i advise myself to have fear of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he tells us in his noble book 
يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون O you who believe fear Allah as he should be feared and do not die except that you are Muslim So here in this ayah we have points 1 and 2 The first that was mentioned was that we have to be Muslim. Allah Ta'ala he commands us here in this ayah, "Wala tamutunna illa wa antum muslimun." And do not die except that you are Muslim. The only way that we can die as Muslims is that we have to live as Muslims because there is not a single one from amongst us who knows when death will come to them. No one from amongst us knows whether they're going to die during the day or during the night, during the weekday or on a weekend. None of us knows this. None of us knows if we're going to die while we are asleep or if we're going to die during the waking hours. So because none of us knows when death will come to us, then we have to live our lives as Muslims in order to die as Muslims. And we see that point mentioned here in this portion of the ayah. As far as the second point that is mentioned, then it is that we have to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As Allah ta'ala, he commands us to fear him as he should be feared. and fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then this means that we establish the obligations and we stay away from the prohibitions naam so we have to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and these undoubtedly a person may say well these are givens all of us knows this naam this is true but the reminder benefits the believers and when we speaking about having a good life then we will not be doing our due diligence we will not be thorough not to mention those points because those points are of tremendous importance likewise we have to be upon the sunnah of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam because if we are not establishing tawhid and if we are not following the sunnah of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam then everything else i'm about to mention doesn't even matter doesn't even count because in order for our deeds to be accepted then they have to be upon tawhid to have to be sincerely for Allah and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone and they have to be in accordance with the sunnah of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam the proofs and the evidences of this then there are many due to a lack of time we're going to mention just one for each bithnilahi ta'ala The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and both of these that I'm going to mention are from the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. One can find them in the 40 hadith of Imam An-Nawawi. The first is the first hadith that was mentioned there telling us that our deeds have to be upon the tawhid, have to be sincerely for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then it is a statement of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam inna mal a'malu bin niyat to the end of the hadith. that verily actions are but by their intentions naam so this hadith is a clear proof and evidence that we will only be rewarded if our intention is correct if our intention is not correct then we will not be rewarded for the deed and also secondly is the hadith of our mother aisha radhiyallahu ta'ala anha where the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said man amila amalan laysa alayhi amruna fa huwa raddun that whoever introduces into or oh, excuse me whoever acts whoever does an action that does not have on it our command then it is rejected in another narration the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said man ahdatha fi amrina hadha ma laysa minhu fa huwa raddun and whoever do, introduces into the affair of ours that which is not from it then it will be rejected naam so we have to always keep this in mind that if we are not doing deeds upon tawhid if we are not doing deeds that are in accordance to the sunnah of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam then they are not going to count they are going to be rejected bila shak wa bila raib undoubtedly they're not going to count so i encourage myself and i encourage my sisters to be very diligent and bringing forth righteous good deeds to spend much of their time in the pursuit 
of worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because there will be no happiness neither in this world nor in the next where a person builds their life upon the opposite of ibadah, the opposite of worship. There will be no happiness in this life nor in the next if a person builds their life upon the opposite of worship. Meaning, if there is no worship that is acceptable in their life, then they have no hopes of being happy. And this is a reminder to the youth from amongst us so that they know and they understand and they appreciate the bounty of Islam in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given them. When you look to the lifestyles of the kuffar, their whole lifestyle is built upon opposite of worship. Their whole lifestyle is built upon following their desires, following their whims, following their lusts, so on and so forth. Such a lifestyle only ends in misery. Such a lifestyle only has therein misery. It is misery built upon misery moving toward the ultimate misery. So let us not be confused by the lies that these individuals, they put forth. Let us not be confused by the deception that these individuals, they bring in trying to convince us. Really, they're trying to convince themselves that they're not as miserable as they actually are. But we know that they are miserable because their life is devoid from that which will bring sweetness to the chest. Their life is devoid from that which will bring ease and tranquility to one's breast. Their life is devoid from Islam. It is devoid from the Tawheed. It is devoid from the Sunnah. So how can they possibly be happy? They're not. This is why you have from amongst them those who kill themselves. Naam. You have from amongst them in great abundance those who are depressed, those who self-medicate, those who are all on all kinds of illegal drugs and substances to dumb down the pain and so they may numb themselves because their life is completely wretched. No matter how much money they may have and so on and so forth, they are living wretched lives. Naam. When we reflect on this, one thing that should jump out at us is that when one is obedient unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah, He removes heartache, doubt, deceptions, whispers, so on and so forth from His believing servants. Now, these things are removed from us. But I want you to pay very close attention and make sure that you write these down ta'ala, because there are specific acts of worship that they bring ease to the chest they remove from us doubts and they remove from us these whispers from the shaitan ma'am the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he told us that siyamu thalathati ayyamin min kulli shahr that fasting 3 days from every month yuthhibna wahr al-sadr then they will remove the deception and deceit doubts and whispers of the chest that they become removed naam that the one who they fast three days of every month, then they will have the doubts, deception, whispers removed from their chest. Naam. And this is every month. Every month of the year, you will find this is the reward here in this world for the one who they fast these three days. And as we know, the reward in this world is nothing in comparison to the reward, uh, the reward in the hereafter. But for the believers, the believers, as, as we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to, uh, to give us the good of this world and of the next. So for those who are believers, then they have good for them in this world and there's ultimate good waiting for them in the next world. So this is from the benefits that one will, the immediate benefits that one will gain from fasting these three days every month. So for those who have the ability to fast, then I encourage you to fast and to fast as much as you possibly can, especially the youth, 
because those who are young, you're in the prime of your life right now as far as your health, as far as your strength. The longer you live, the more you will see an effect on your health, your strength, your energy, so on and so forth. Now, the longer you live, the more you will see that your health, it will start to go. Your strength, it will start to go. Your vigor, it will start to go. So take advantage while you're in the prime right now as relates to these things, to take advantage of them in Bithnilahi Ta'ala. And this is to be something that all of us, especially the older ones, should be constantly reminding the younger ones to take advantage of their youth. So take advantage of your youth by fasting, which you're able to fast from the voluntary fast. Make sure that there's not a single month that goes by except that you fast some of his days. And if you can't fast no more than just three days a month, voluntary fast, then fast those three days a month, voluntary fast. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam لَقَدْ بَيَّنَ لَنَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ أَنَّ مَنْ صَامَ مِنْ كُلِّ شَحْنٍ ثَلَاثَ أَيَامٍ The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he explained to us that whoever they fast every month three days, نعم, whoever fasts every month three days, فَكَأَنَّمَا صَامَ الْعَامٍ that it is as if they have fasted the whole year. That whoever fasts three days, it's as if they have fasted the whole year. فَحَدَّدَ لَنَا أَيَّامِ الْبَيْضِ And the Prophet وسلم, he pointed out for us the white days as they call them. And they are الثَالِثَ عَشَرْ وَرَابِعَ الْعَشَرْ وَخَامِصَ عَشَرْ They are the 13th the 14th and the 15th. So whoever they are able to fast these three days, now, then fast these three days, ta'ala. And if you do that every month, it'd be like you fasted the whole year. But for the one who says that they, due to their schedule, whatever the case is, they can't fast three days back to back. Okay. Then make sure that you fast three days in a month, whether it is Three Mondays or three Thursdays or a mixture of the two. Naam, then you make sure that you fast three days a month. Whoever they say, well, during my work day is difficult for me to fast for whatever reason. Okay, then on the days that you find yourself less busy, then you fast three of those days. Because whoever fasts three days a month, it is as if they have fasted the whole year. For thalatha ayam min kulli shahr bithalathin. Because three three days from every month, it equals 30. How does it equal 30? Because every hasana bi'ashri amthaliha. Because every good deed is multiplied at least by 10. 10 is the default. Now, 10 is the minimum multiplication. It's 10. Every good deed is multiplied by 10. So, bithnilahi ta'ala, I encourage the sisters to fast. I encourage the sisters to fast, to fast, to fast. Now, the first hadith that was mentioned about the fasting three days every month and how it removes from the chest the deceit, deception, the doubts, and the whispers. Now, anyone that is suffering from the whispers of shaitan, so on and so forth, then these are the things that are going to help you get over that. That hadith has been collected, Akhrajahu Ahmed, has been collected by Imam Ahmed wa Sahahahu al Albani. As far as the second hadith, where the Prophet Sallallahu he pointed out for us the three days a month, the Ayyam al the white nights or the white days as they call them, being the 13th, the 14th, and the 15th, then this hadith, Akhrajuhu al turmadhi it has been collected by al turmadhi wa Hassanuhu al-Albani, and has been graded as Hassan by al-Albani. Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala, he and throughout the course of the year, he gives us many opportunities to benefit ourselves. Now that we go from one occasion where we can benefit ourselves to another occasion that we can benefit ourselves. We just passed the um, first 10 days of Dhul Hijjah. Now this was the last great opportunity for us to benefit ourselves. And those who were able to benefit then they benefited, na'am? But those who missed out, okay? Those who missed out and they didn't benefit from these first 10 days, 
then alhamdulillah, what? There is another occasion that is coming, okay? As far as fasting those three days, you still have some time in the month, a couple of days left, that, inshallah ta'ala, you could try to get your three days in. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he put right behind it another period of time that we can benefit therein. قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he said أحب الصيام إلى الله بعد شهر رمضان شهر الله الذي تسمونه تسمونه المحرم the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he said in his hadith that has been collected by Muslim and it's from the hadith of Abi Huraira رضي الله تعالى عنه the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he said that the most beloved fast unto Allah after Ramadan, that it is the fast during the month that you have named it Al-Muharram. And this is the month that we are about to embark upon. That this is the most beloved fast unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So whoever they missed out on the last opportunity, the last auspicious occasion, then you have another opportunity right there, right now, and it's about to come, and you have another opportunity in that you're alive right now today. So do what you can do to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala right here in this moment, bithnilahi ta'ala, and then follow that up with every moment that is the present moment for you to capitalize and to benefit, bithnilahi ta'ala, until uh, we're able to reach this point if Allah Ta'ala has written for us that we will live to see the month of Muharram. Naam. So fasting in the month of, Rahab, of, of Muharram, that it is a great opportunity for us. We have inside of the month of Muharram, Yom Ashura, Naam, which is a great opportunity for us to fast on that day. To fast the 9th and the 10th of uh, the month of Al Muharram is a great opportunity. Naam. So inshallah Ta'ala, make sure that you could try to fast these days also fasting mondays and thursdays tomorrow bithnilahi ta'ala is a monday so there's not another opportunity for us to benefit ourselves bithnilahi ta'ala by fasting it ala kulli hal what is muhim is that we strive our best to worship allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by fasting what we are able to fast bithnilahi ta'ala this is a tremendous 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 opportunity so inshallah ta'ala i encourage my sisters to fast as much as you're able to fast as far as those who are not married then you fast but you're able to fast and you fast and you fast inshallah ta'ala those who are married after seeking the permission of your husbands to fast then you fast as much as you're able to fast bithilahi ta'ala and if your husband has a need for you and you're not able to fast on that particular day, it is no problem. Why? Because you'll be going from one obedience to another obedience, bithnilahi ta'ala. You'll be going from fasting to sadaqah, bithnilahi ta'ala. So you still will be, will be rewarded, inshallah ta'ala. So there is no way you can lose. Right? When you understand your religion and you strive to be upon it and you strive to practice it and you strive your hardest, then you will realize there is no way for you to lose. The only people who lose out are people who they are away from the deen, who try to find victory and things that are outside and foreign to the religion. For those who try to find victory and comfort and peace inside of the disobedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, these are going to be the ones who lose. But those who strive to do what is correct and who strive to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who strive to gather for themselves some good deeds as much as they're able to do on a consistent manner, then there's no way they can lose because even when they slip up, they make tawbah. So that slip up and they didn't make tawbah, the tawbah erases it. They brought forth a bad deed, then they bring a good deed. The good deed wipes out the bad deed. The one who repents unto Allah is like the one who never sins. So what? Even when they wrong, they lose because they follow it up with that which is right. You understand? And this is the nature of the believer, is that no matter what they may do that is wrong, they quickly turn around and they rectify it and they get rid of that sin as quick as they possibly can. And if this is your mentality, ma'am, then this is then this is why you will find that fearless uh, uh, attitude with the believers, because their fear is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Anything outside of that, then they're not worrying about it because they know Allah can whatever Allah wills is, whatever he does not will is not. And they realize no one can do anything to them if Allah Ta'ala didn't write it for them. 
no one can give them anything if Allah Ta'ala did not write that thing for them. So their connection is to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And as long as they're trying to please Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, they don't care who is displeased from the human beings. They don't care because they realize seeking after the pleasure of the human beings, then this is not a praiseworthy goal in any which way, shape, and form. But true strive to please Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and those human beings who are pleased by that which pleases Allah, then they are the only human beings you need to have concern for. Those who they find displeasure and that which pleases Allah, then these are the ones who you want to put between you and between them the distance greater than the distance between the East and the West. Full stop. Now, <clears throat> for those who have more ability, they're very strong, right? Then they are encouraged to fast the fast of Dawood, this is the best fast. Now, and those who say, I want to take fasting to its full, to its full uh, extent. Then the fast to the full extent is that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, was Suyamul Dawood. That the fast of Dawood, that it was, Kana yasumu yawman wa yaftiru yawman. That he will fast one day, break his fast the next day. So whoever they can fast, the epitome of what it is to fast, then it is the fast of Dawood. Alayhi salatu wa salam. This hadith akhrajuhu Muslim. Min hadith Abi Qutada. So I encourage my sisters as I encourage myself and encourage everyone who my voice it reaches them to make sure that they that they fast what they can fast bithnilahi ta'ala. And if they cannot fast the fast of Dawood, then they fast every Monday and Thursday. They can't fast every Monday and Thursday, they make sure they fast three days a month. And if they're gonna break it to three days a month, break it down to three days a month, then they try to make it the 13th, the 14th, and the 15th. And if they can't, then any three days in a month, inshallah, so they can get the reward of fasting the whole year by fasting three days every month. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, let us go back to the occasion in which we're about to enter upon. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, he said, Afdal al-Suyam ba'da Ramadan shahra shahrullah al-Muharram wa afdal al-Salaa ba'da al-Faridha salat al that the best fast after the month of Ramadan, after Ramadan, that it is in Allah's month, Al-Muharram. And the best salah after the obligatory prayer, that it is the prayer at nighttime. And that brings us to our next point, And that is to make sure that we are praying from the nighttime, that which we are able to pray from the nighttime. Because this is the sharaf, this is the nobility of the believer. As the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam informed us, وَعْلَمْ أَنَّ شَرَفَ الْمُؤْمِنْ he said, and know that the nobility, the honor of a, of a believer, that it is they're standing up at night praying. They're standing up at night and praying unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So make sure that you are taking your portion of nobility. If you want to have true nobility, naam, then make sure that you are taking your portion by standing what you could at night time. As the ulama al mashaykh they mention, وَمَن لَمْ يَأْخُذْ بِهَذَا الشَّرَفْ فَإِنَّهُ لَا شَرَفَ لَهُ That whoever does not take this nobility, does not take their portion of nobility by praying at night time, then there's no nobility for them. There's no nobility for them. Naam. So I encourage myself and I encourage you all to make sure that you're standing at night and you're praying something from the night prayer bithnilahi ta'ala that you're praying something from the night prayer inshallah bithnilahi ta'ala because we have to be appreciative you see Allah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he guided us to Islam this is a, 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 a favor a bounty a present that Allah ta'ala has given to us Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he has guided us to the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam this is a present this is a favor a bounty in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he has given to us. Allah ta'ala, he has given us health. Allah ta'ala, he has given us sound minds. Allah ta'ala has given us the ability to worship him. Allah ta'ala has given us all those things that we love, that are, that are good. Allah gave us that. Naam, Allah gave us that. So we should be appreciative. And this was how the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, well, from the ways, I should say, Naam, this is from the ways that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he showed his appreciation to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that he will pray until his feet they will split and then when he was asked about this the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said afala uhibba an akuna abdan shakura he said is it not except that i love to be a appreciative slave 
to be appreciative unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it is important for us that we strive to be appreciative unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by praying something from the night prayer, bithnilahi ta'ala. Everyone pray from the night prayer, whatever you're able to pray, bithnilahi ta'ala. But make sure that you're consistent in your praying it, okay? Now, if you if you did not memorize a lot of the Quran, as we're going to come to this point too, inshallah, child, is very important. But listen, before we get there, if you didn't memorize a lot from the Quran, then no problem. You can read it. You can you can hold you can hold the mushaf and you can read it bithnilahi ta'ala so that there is no excuse. But let us strive. As the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said that Man layl ayat, that whoever stands the night with ten ayat, bi'ashli ayatin, naam. لم يكتب من الغافلين Then they will not be written from those who are heedless Whoever stands up at the night with ten And they recite ten ayat Naam, they recite ten ayat Now I want you to think about this, okay? Person say ten ayat, yeah Ten ayat Surah Al-Fatiha is seven by itself Shaif Surah Al-Fatiha is seven ayat by itself The Prophet said Whoever stands up at night with ten ayat then they will not be written from those who are heedless. They will not be written from those who are heedless. Woman Kwamil Lail Bil Mia Ayatin and whoever stands up at night and they recite one hundred verses, Kutiba Minal Qanitin, then they'll be written from those who are extremely devout. And that's with what? That's with one hundred verses. They'll be written. As one who is extremely devout. وَمَنْ قَامِ اللَّيْلِ بِالْأَلْفِ بِالْأَلْفِ آيَةِ And whoever stands the night and they pray. One thousand. They recite one thousand verses. كُتِبَ مِنَ الْمُقَنْطِلِينَ Then they will be written from the مُقَنْطِلِينَ الْمُقَنْطِلُونَ Who are these people? They are those whom... Allah Ta'ala will give them a treasure. Naam? A qintar. A qintar is like a treasure chest. It's like a vault of treasure. Allah Ta'ala will give them a vault of, 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 of reward. La ya'lamuhu illallah. Only Allah knows how much is there. Only Allah knows how big this reward is. Allah Ta'ala, He will give them a vault full of reward. Only Allah knows how big it is. So could you imagine how much reward that is? And that's for those who they recite 1,000, you know, ayat at nighttime. You see, these are life goals right here. Person, they want to say, you know, they want to have a life goal, yeah, relationship goal, all this stuff like that. Then as a, as, a, as a couple, you and your husband, these are the kind of things you should be shooting for as an individual. Self-improvement. These are the things you should be shooting for, bithnilahi ta'ala, to stand up. A night from the nights, and you recite 1,000 verses. Naam? This is something that is tremendous. The hadith, the last hadith that was mentioned, for those who want to go back and look at it, it is collected by Abu Dawood. Um, it was graded as Hassan, as good, by Al Albani. The aforementioned hadith, the one that was before that, when the Prophet said, let me show us how we could show our appreciation. Where he said, is it not except that I love to be a slave that is thankful? أَخْرَجُهُ الْبُخَارِيَ مُسْلِمْ حَدِيثُ مُتَفِقٌ عَلَيْهِ مِنْ حَدِيثِ عَائِشَةً رَضِيَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَىٰ عَنْهَا So we got to pray something from the night prayer, بِثْنِ اللَّهِ تَعَالَىٰ And I want you to encourage your husbands and I want you to have that type of good, wholesome, loving relationship where you encourage each other to do good and you help each other upon doing good. As there comes a hadith, أَخْرَجُهُ أَبُوْ دَعُودِ وَبْنُ Maja وَصَحَهُ الْبَانِ A hadith that has been collected by Abu Dawood and by Ibn Maja and graded as authentic by Al-Albani where the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said مَنْ قَامَ بِاللَّيْنِ Whoever stands up at night time and he prays at night time. And then he wakes up his wife. فصليا, and then they both write and then they both pray. Two units of prayer. 
Turaka. Nam. Kutiba, both of them shall be written. Mina Dakinin Allah Kathira wa Dakirat. Then they both shall be written from those who those men and women who remember Allah much. Nam. So this is the man who he he got up, he prayed. They say the wife wasn't feeling well, whatever the case is, she didn't get a lot of sleep because she was doing what she was doing during the day with the children, the house, whatever the case is, right? And then he wakes her up and they pray two rakat together, two units of prayer together. Then they both shall be written as those men and women who remember Allah much. Those individuals who, men and women who remember Allah much, these are the individuals or from the characteristics of the people of who? Of Jannah. These are, these are two of the characteristics or a characteristic from those individuals whom Allah Ta'ala, He has promised for them, the Jannah. And this is for who? Again, let's go over that again. If the man stands up at nighttime and he prays, and then he wakes his wife up, and they pray two units of prayer together, then they will be written from those men and women who remember Allah much. So I encourage each and every one of us to make sure you pray every night, full stop, no exception, okay? Because in the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, because the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, ma tarakal witr abadan, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he never left witr. Ma'am? So I'm telling everybody, I'm saying to myself first and foremost, make sure you pray at least witr every night and there is no excuse there is no excuse whatsoever. Everybody can do this. Everybody can do this. Okay? How do I know everybody can do this? Because the bare minimum amount of witr is what? Is one raka. One. One raka. So if you prayed one raka and all you recited was, was Surah Al Fatiha, that's it. And then. You just pray one rakah like that, that is witr. That's witr. Okay? So, all of us have the ability to do that. Ma'am? So, the, and I want you to remember that the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he never left off the witr. Neither while he was at home, resident, nor while he was traveling. He always prayed what? The witr. Always. Okay? So, I encourage us all to make sure that we are praying the witr prayer. Likewise, that which will help us and to aid us into praying at nighttime, then this is our next point. If you want to have a successful life, then you have to make sure that you are studying the Quran, that you are studying the Quran. If you want your sharaf, if you want your nobility, naam, the nobility it comes from what for praying in the nighttime and from being diligent upon this Quran. As it comes in um yani fi hadith Umar and Nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam on the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam he said inna Allah yarfa'u bi hadha al-kitab qawman wa yad'u bihi akhirin. That Allah he raises with this book some people and he debases others. Naam. What's the book? The Quran. So if you want to be risen, then what? Then make sure you give great attention to the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay? As it comes in the famous hadith, the hadith of Uthman, radiyallahu ta'ala anhu fi ma rawahu al-Bukhari fi sahihi and that which um, Imam Bukhari, he brings in his sahih. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, خَيْرُكُمْ مَنْ تَعَلَّمَ الْقُرْآنَ وَعَلَّمَهِ That the best of you are those who they learn the Qur'an and they teach it. Now for the sisters, the sisters will say, well, I mean, I can't, you know, I have no ability to become a teacher, things like that. I'm shy, I don't want to do it. Okay, listen, sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he has put you in a position. Now, really everyone who has children, but we're talking about the sisters, right? Allah Ta'ala has put you in a position that you have students right there. Students right there in who? In your children. In your children. Okay? So the Prophet Sallallahu said, the best of you are those who learn the Quran and then they teach it. They learn the Quran and then they teach it.
So teaching your children the Quran, then this is something that I encourage you to spend your time doing. Learning it yourself and then teaching it to them. Learning it yourself and then teaching it to them. Learning Tajweed, teaching them Tajweed. You learn how to read, you teach them how to read. Naam, this is of extreme importance. You learn something from the meanings of the Quran, naam, then you teach your children. You teach them that bihnilahi ta'ala. This is how we truly benefit. And this will aid and assist you in what? In establishing the night prayer. Because now, if you spent time learning how to read and you learned the tajweed, then you can read from the mushaf if you have yet to memorize those, those, those chapters. Okay? So it's a win-win. And if you are studying and memorizing the Quran and you have memorized it, then what? Then you can recite from memory what those chapters, you see. So we have to spend some serious time in benefiting ourselves. Unfortunately, we live in a time that there are a lot of distractions, right? And really, those things that distract us, they could be things that aid us because it's just a tool. The problem is, is that we misuse it. That's the problem. We misuse the tool. That same phone that people swipe, 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 swiping on all the time, right? That same phone, that same device, it has apps on it where you could read along with the Quran while, while a reciter is reciting it. Where you can set the app so that each verse gets recited a number of times in a row. Ten times per each verse is going to be recited for moves to the next one. Three times, four times, five times. Huh? You have in it that which will help you. That which will help. If you try to memorize, then you put it on where every verse is recited ten times. And you listen. And then you play the verse again and you try to recite along with it ten times in a row. The point is, is that there are many tools, there are many things there that can help you. As long as you use the tool correct. Okay? As long as you use the tool correct. If you use the tool correctly, then alhamdulillah, it will benefit you. If you misuse it, it's going to hurt you. It's like a hammer. If you need to nail a nail inside the wall because you want to hang, a, you know, whatever, right? Uh, sunset, something, you know, I don't know, right? You want to hang the mirror, you understand? So you take that hammer, you can use that hammer in the right way and it benefits you. Now you hung your mirror up, you know, you know, hung the blackboard up, the whiteboard, whatever the case is, right? So it can help you teach the children. It benefits you. But you can take that same hammer and you can hit yourself in the thumb with it. And it's going to hurt you. It's going to hurt you. Right? So just reflect on that. How you using how you using them thumbs. Okay? It is important that we devote time to the Quran and that we spend time reading over the translation. And if you have the ability to get the noble Quran, the three volume version where it is word for word translation, get that Bithilahi Ta'ala. And then buy you a whole bunch of notebooks and you fill them up. You fill them up, inshallah ta'ala. Whatever surah that you're on, make sure you go through it word for word. Write down the Arabic, write down the English. They, they've done the work for you. It's right there. Basically, all you're doing is copying, reading, and trying to understand. So make sure you're doing that, inshallah ta'ala. Make sure that your notebooks are for what? They're filled up. Bithnilahi ta'ala. And this is what you want to read to your children. This is when, when your husband comes home, you want to share with your husband. Yeah? This is when at the end of the night, you know, this, this, is, this is the pillow talk that you have with your husband. You know, you read to him what, what you studied today. You read to him this verse that you was going over today, word for word. This word means this and so on and so forth. And you build together. This is what's going to make for a successful relationship. This is what's going to make for a successful marriage. And this is what is going to make for a good life. Okay, anybody who's living a life like this, no matter what comes at them from the loss of the dunya, that's dunya. We lose anyway. You know, one day we're healthy, one day we're sick, right? Uh, loved ones are born one day, loved ones die another day. That's dunya. That's how it is. Now, the point is, is that if you're living your life right, that's how you're gonna live a good life. Because other, because you know what's gonna happen. If you live your life in the wrong way, you still gonna get sick. And people you love still going to die. Your People who you thought was your friend still going to betray you. You're still going to stump your, 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 your pinky toe on the side of the corner of the bed. Right? Bad things still, you know, because that's dunya. So it's not like, oh, if I live wrong, I'm going to escape. No, no, you're still going to be misery upon misery. 
But if you live your life in a good manner, the misery is easy to deal with because of what? Because your iman. So when the good times happen, you're thankful to Allah Ta'ala. Naam. Fakana khayrun la, as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said. Ma usabahu sarra shakar. Fakana khayrun la. Whoever is and he tested with good times, he's thankful and that's better for him. So you're thankful, good times happen, you're thankful, it's better for you. Now you get rewarded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Good upon good upon good upon good. And if a bad thing happened to you, man asabathu darra sabar fakana khayrun la. And whoever is tested with difficulty, they are patient and that is better for them. The iman. This is how the believer is able to be patient and to weather these storms. So when a believer is patient after a calamity is happening to him, then that's better for him because they'll be rewarded for that. Or, yani, uh, she will be rewarded for that. He or she, they will be rewarded for that. Naam. So sins will come off of them because of the, 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 the worry that they're going through, because of the pain and anguish that they're going through and so on and so forth. And likewise, they'll be raised in ranks because of the harm that they're going through and then they're being patient upon that. So it's good upon good upon good. And that's why the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said, فَإِنَّ, فَإِنَّ أَمْرَهُ كُلَّهُ لَهُ خَيْرٍ And that verily his um, situation is for him all good. For who? For the believer, al-mu'min. For the believer, it's all good. So if you are living your life in a manner where it's all good, then you're going to have a good life. How would it be possible that you don't have a good life? You're going to have a good life because you're living your life in a manner that is all good. Huh? That makes sense? There is so much, so many points that I had that I wanted to share with you that I fear as looking at the time, I'm not going to be able to get to. So with Allahi Ta'ala, what I want to do is I want to bring you a summary almost, right? Because the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam sisters, and I want you to listen. Now, I want you to listen good. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he gave you a recipe. He gave you a recipe that on the day of judgment, if you follow this, you're going to be extremely, 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 extremely happy. Okay? Qala Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, Either salat, if she prays, naam, <clears throat> either salat al maratu khamsaha, wa samat shahraha, wa hassanat, wa firiwaya, wa hafidat farujaha, wa ataat zawjaha, qila laha udukhili jenna, min ayi abawab jenna, shit. That the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said, and I want you to really listen, 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 check this out. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that if a woman prays her five, if she fasts her month, if she safeguards, and in one narration, yani, hasanat, yani, she, she, she utilizes her private parts in the best manner, and she obeys her husband, that it will be said to her, enter into Jannah from any door of Jannah you want to. Okay? It will be said to her, enter into Jannah from any door of Jannah that you want to. This hadith was collected um, in Sahih al Jamir. Okay, in Sahih al Jami, there's a hadith that Al Albani said this hadith is good, it's authentic, you can use it, right? And it is from the narration of Abu Huraira. Let us reflect, Bithnilai Ta'ala, in these last couple minutes, let us reflect on this hadith. For the Mar'a, al Saliha, for the righteous woman, Al Lati to Addi Furudaha, the one who she does her, her obligations. Naam. She does her obligations by, by praying her five daily prayers. She fasts her month of Ramadan. Naam. And she obeys her husband. Bithnilahi ta'ala. We're going to come point by point. Bithnilahi ta'ala. Okay. And she obeys her husband. And she will have 
a tremendous, tremendous station. She'll have a tremendous station and she will be happy. She will be from those whom Allah Ta'ala he is pleased with. So much so that on the day of judgment, she will be have her choice to any of the doors of Jannah that she wants to enter into. It'll be her choice. Okay. Now, people talk about women's empowerment and so on and so forth. What's more empowering than this? That on the day of judgment, you could enter into Jannah from any door that you choose. You have full choice. Whatever door you want. Whatever door you want. Okay? That's empowerment. That's the position that you want to be in if you truly have respect for yourself. ta'ala. So this hadith in it, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said that whoever, whatever, whatever woman, now, if she were to pray her five daily prayers, يعني, that she prays her prayers, her obligatory prayers, كما ينبغي, she prays them as they should be prayed. So now, this stresses the importance of learning how to pray, learning what to say inside of your prayer, now, learning those matters that are connected to the prayer. Like the affairs of purification of wudu, man, learning the affairs of ghusl, so on and so forth. These things are important. Why? Because they're linked to your prayer. They're linked to your prayer. So knowing what are the oblig obligatory matters of, of, of the prayer, what are the sunnah matters of the prayer, so on, and what are the pillars of the prayer, so on and so forth. You have to know this. It's connected because you're not going to be able to pray correctly if you don't know these things. So now taking time to learn about these things is important. Wahafilat. And then she... Preserves what? She preserves the times of the prayer. So she's not praying late. Okay? She's not neglectful on her prayers. But she's praying her prayers in their time. Very important. Very important. Okay? And then she and then she fasts her month. So she fasts the month of Ramadan. She fasts the month of Ramadan. And also what? And and she also, she makes up the days that she missed due to a legislative excuse. So you also what? You also have to make sure that you're making up your days so that you know what are the rules and regulations surrounding and connected to making up the days. All of this is very important. Okay. Learning, learning the, uh, the, um, learning the rules and regulations of fasting and learning the rules and regulations and making up the days that you miss. Due to a legislative excuse. It's very important. It's very important for her to know. And also those things that cause her to have an excuse. It's very important that you know the fit of these things. So that you know when it starts and you know when it stops. So that you know what is what is what what is this blood distinguished from that blood. It's very important. Naam, because it's linked to what is linked to your success. Because listen, the goal is you want to come to your Qiyamah and it's said to you, enter to any door of Jannah you want. So you gotta you have to you have to know these things. And she safeguards or she uh, utilizes in the most beautiful and most excellent manner, the proper manner, what? Her private parts. And that she what? That she preserves it. She preserves it. She preserves her private parts. She preserves it. And in what? She preserves it from what? And in haram. She preserves it from the haram. Like fornication, adultery. You see, this, this, this comes out to one's mind and it's like, yeah, yeah, that's easy. I understand that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. So she don't make zina. But also as parents, we have to make sure that we're helping our children also in this because what? Because as the promise I said, let me say, yeah, ma'asha al-shabaab, man sultaa minkum al-ba'a fal tizawwaj. Man la yamastutia. Yeah, I mean, al-tizawwaj. Fa'innahu aghadhu lil-basar wal, wal, the Prophet he said that all oh, assembly of you, those who have the ability to get married, get married. And then um, because it, you're able to lower your gaze more and safeguard your private parts more by, by, way of what? by way of marriage. Okay, so marriage helps. So if you want our daughters to be from these women on a day of judgment, said to them, enter any door gender you want, then help, help your daughter get married. Okay. And whoever does not have the ability to let them fast because the fasting for them, it will reduce their sexual desires. So this is important. So you might have to fast. You can't get married? Then then fast. Don't utilize your private part in the wrong way. Usually it comes to people's minds where they say, okay, this means that she don't make zina or that he don't make zina, right? But then it may not necessarily enter things other than that. The early man they mentioned, they said, kel zina was sihaq. 
They said like Zina, they said like Zina, like fornication, and also like lesbianism and other than it. Okay? Because safeguarding the private parts means that you safeguard it from everything that is not appropriate. And that it is not just restricted to penetration. People think, okay, but just penetration, that's it. But anything shy of that, well, at least I didn't make Zina, right? No. You have to safeguard your private part and you don't use it in an incorrect manner. So the so the early man they mentioned they said like lesbianism. Lesbianism. Sihak. Now lesbianism does not necessarily include penetration, but it could be kissing. Now it could be other things that you know what they are. This also is utilizing the private part in an incorrect manner. So you will be so you will lose out on this characteristic because you had to have all these characteristics to get what to get that on the day of judgment where it says enter how you want any any door you want. So if you do these things that may not necessarily enter uh, enter into it penetration, but the other foul things, the other dis despicable and horrible things is lesbianism stuff, then this will get you barred from entering or it be saying to you, enter into any door of judgment that you want. But it's gonna get you in trouble. So the Rainbow Coalition, these are not your friends. These are not people who intend good for no one. They don't intend good for themselves. How do they good for you? You understand? These are people who they're living their lives in the most destructive manner, setting themselves up to go to hell in the most humiliating fashion. That's what they're doing. They set themselves up to go to hell in the most humiliating fashion. Because those things that get people in the most trouble is what is that which is between their uh, jaw bones and that which is between their legs that they don't utilize them right these are the two things that, that are going to land most people inside the hellfire okay so it's important for you to understand that and the ulama they also mentioned they said well farj yutlaqu alayhi al qubul wa dubur wa dubur and what's means by the farj by the private part it means the front and the back although istimal yani al akthar istimalihi urfan fi al qubul although the way that is used the most inside of uh, the language or yani, um, how would you say culturally then it means the front but here it means everything it means the front and the back the front and the back because you have some evil people out there Muslims I'm not talking about non-Muslims I'm talking about some evil Muslims who they have the understanding as long as the front is untouched then you then you can do what you want with the back this way when I get married they can't say I'm not a virgin really? Allah Mustaan Allah Mustaan, you're trying to trick Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you're going to be in trouble. Keep playing, you see what happened to you. In any event, you mess around like that, you have lost out on this, this um, condition of utilizing your private part in the right way. Okay? And then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, زوجaha, And she obeys her husband. Naam, that they obey you obey your husband in everything that is connected to his right. To everything that's connected to his right. And in everything that is ma'roof. If it's in ma'asiyah, if it's in sin, no, you don't obey nobody in sin. But if it's in that which is good, wholesome, that which is good and is, is, is known to be good, is well known, then you obey your husband in that. And you stay away from those women, those feminists, ultra liberal nut jobs who if they find you and see you obeying your husband will discourage you from doing this now any person that questions you as to why you are obeying your husband and that which is good and that which is in obedience then you run away from that person with the fastest running get away from that person cut that person off you don't need nothing to do with that person because that person will want no good for you because of, because what are they trying to say why 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 are you obeying him so that, what does that mean now that you should disobey him so they encourage you to disobey your husband no anybody that will encourage you to do this and that you don't got to listen to him and that'll tell you things like that hang up on them get them away from you don't be around them that's not your friend she's going to get you in trouble because if you obey your husband Safeguard your private parts, fast your month, and you pray your five prayers, then it will be said, enter into Jannah from any door you want. The only matter they mention, because sometimes, you know, we hear this, I don't think we understand what it means. 
The only man they mention, this means that on the day of judgment, you know that alayha, on the day of judgment, somebody is going to call from each door, from each door, be calling out to her, enter from here, from where, from the Abu Wabi, Jannah al Thamaniya, from the eight doors of Jannah. It will be said from each door, you come here, no, no, come here, no, you come here, no. Every all eight doors, a voice will be telling you, come, come, enter from this door. This is honor. This is nobility. This is that honor and, 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 and nobility that 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 crazy whack job feminist is trying to rob you from. This is that nobility that that crazy whack job lesbian dyke bull dagger is trying to rob you from. This is that nobility that these individuals who don't want you to fast and don't want you to pray is trying to rob you from. Anybody trying to rob you from that, they are not your friend. They are an enemy. Treat them as such. Categorize them as such. Deem them as such. Treat them like that. Stay away from them. Okay, because if you want to be successful in this world and in the next, these are the characteristics that you have to have. This is what you have to be upon. Okay, full stop. Nothing more, nothing less. You have to do that in which Allah Ta'ala He's commanded you to do and stay away from that which He has commanded you to stay away from. You have to be upon the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And you have to be upon the way of the Sahaba. This is how you're going to live your best life. This is how you're going to live your best life in this world and in the next. This is the way.